Today we have with us Congressman Tim Bishop, who represents Long Island, and we're going to have a short conversation with him. So, sir, let me begin by asking you this question. As a member of the Education and Labor Committee, what are your views of the current state of education in the United States? Do you believe there can be more collaboration between the United States and India in this matter? First off, on, with respect to um, the condition of education in the United States, I think we have some uh, great successes that we should be very proud of, but we have some real problem areas that we have begun to address, but we must address much more aggressively than is currently the case. We have too many of our school systems uh, that are failing. Uh, we have too many high schools that are considered to be dropout factories, uh, and colleges are right now uh, at beyond the reach of a great many of Americans based on their, on their financial circumstances. So I'm concerned about a couple of things. I am concerned that the K through 12 education uh, that our young people receive be at the highest possible level. And I b share the president's goal that K through 12 education result in all graduates being either college ready or career ready. And by college ready, uh, we mean graduates who are ready to attend college without uh, needing remediation. So that's, that's on the K through 12 level. On the higher education level, we have to make sure that higher education remains affordable. And uh, do you believe there can be any collaboration between the United States and India in this matter? Oh, I, I'm sure that there can be. I think India has a very strong educational system. Uh, and I think that um, uh, exchange programs uh, that, that bring students back and forth I think can be very valuable. I think we can each learn uh, from the best practices uh, that are employed in each of our countries. Uh, and so I, I would encourage that kind of collaboration. Okay. okay. So we move on. For many years now, the United States has been attracting the best and brightest from all around the world. Uh, in this new emerging global economy, there are a lot of options for students now. What do you think the U.S. can do to show and prove that we are still a land of opportunity? I think a couple of things. Uh, going back to the point about higher education, uh, two statistics I'm concerned about. In the United States, we have fallen from first to sixth in the world in the proportion of our high school graduates who go on to college. And we have fallen from first to 12th in the world in the proportion of our population that has a college degree. Neither one of those numbers are good numbers in terms of our competitiveness in a global marketplace. So we clearly need to work on both of those numbers and try to regain the position of dominance that we once had. That's all about access and affordability for higher education, and that's all about quality K through 12 education. The other thing that we need to make sure of is that there are jobs uh, for our young people to go into once they graduate, and that the communities in which they choose to live have opportunities for them to live uh, and, and be able to either rent or buy homes at affordable prices all over this country. But particularly in my district, uh, young people are having a very hard time finding places where they can afford to live. Uh, and so we have to work on that. But we also have to, uh, once again, we have to start making things in America again. Uh, uh, we have become a service economy, and we need to start making things in America again so that there are places for our graduates to go. That is indeed a very valid point. Yeah. Uh, you're a member of the Transportation and Infrastructure Committee. <clears throat> what recommendations or ideas might you have for Indian American entrepreneurs? in the field of renewable energy? Well, I think renewable energy is the field of the future. Uh, and I think that the, the job growth that I know is coming in this country uh, is going to be in the area of green jobs. And whether it is uh, you know, developing the next generation of batteries, or whether it is uh, you know, continuing to develop plug-in hybrids, or whether it is greater reliance on wind energy, or solar energy, or, or uh, energy from the tides, or whatever it is, that is the next wave of job creation in this country. Uh, it's something that I think this country, we, we must be working on much more aggressively than we currently are. There are some, there are some uh, so-called so green shoots of activity, but we need much more of that. Uh, and I think that's a model. I mean, we, we are actually falling behind. India is, is outpacing us in, in certain areas. China is outpacing us in certain areas. Europe is. If you just look, for example, at high-speed rail, uh, China is clobbering us on high-speed rail, as is Japan, as is Europe. These are all things that we need to begin to focus on. 
uh, as a follow-up question, <coughs> when do you think the renewable when do you think renewable energy is going to capture the energy market in the U.S.? Do you have a time frame in mind? Uh, I wish I did, uh, and I you know we pass energy legislation in the House of Representatives. It's stalled in the Senate. Uh, depending on how the Congress is composed, uh, when we reconvene in January, energy legislation may be much harder uh, to pass, uh, given uh, how, as I say, how our membership may change. So um, I, I, uh, I wish I could predict a number, uh, but uh, if I were to predict a number, I'm, I'm afraid it's going to be more far off than I think any one of us would really like to see. That's a very honest reply. Yeah. And uh, could you please provide us with a statement from members of US, U.S. Impact? It can be as general or as specific as you Well, I represent a, a, a large number of Indian Americans uh, in my district, and they are, you know, they are, frankly, leaders in my district. They're the doctors and the lawyers and the uh, research scientists and the college professors. I have, for example, a Department of Energy lab in my district. Uh, I have a large uh, unit of the state university system that is a major research institution. So I, in, I represent a, a number of Indian Americans. Americans. I'm proud to represent them. Uh, I think they bring vibrancy to our community. Uh, I think they bring diversity to our community. Um, and uh, I, I also am right now employing an Indian American uh, on my staff, uh, who is a delightful young woman, shares my passion for tennis. Mm -hmm. And um, so um, I look forward to working with the Indian Americans in my uh, in, in my district, and I also look forward uh, to continuing to forge bonds uh, between our two countries that will be beneficial for, for each of our countries. Thank you, sir. And lastly, would you be willing to speak about the work that U.S. Impact has done on behalf of the Indian American community and U.S. India relations? Uh, of course. I'd be, I'd be happy to. In fact, there was a, a, a dinner uh, honor, honoring uh, members of our Indian American community uh, a w few years ago that I was invited to as the keynote speaker. Mm -hmm. uh, it was right around the time that we were considering uh, the U.S.-India Nuclear Cooperation Act, so that was mm -hmm. an issue that was very important. Uh, so I'd be happy to do that. Uh, I've been to uh, a Festival of Lights ceremony, which I found very enjoyable. Mm -hmm. So yes, I would be happy to come. I'd be happy to speak to any group that would be interested in hearing me. Oh, thank you so much, sir, for your valuable time. Okay. It was a pleasure speaking. Thank, thank you. Thank you.